Okay, um, welcome to this tutorial, guys, on numerical methods. Uh, we're using numerical integration, and we are covering the midpoint method. Okay, before we covered the trapezoid rule and Simpson's rule, but now we will be doing the midpoint method, which is particularly useful for double and triple integrals. It can also be used for a single integral, but they're uh, mostly used for double and triple integrals, so that's what we will be covering. Okay, so let's get to the equation. So we will base it off the second integral. So we can say the double integral from a to b and c to d of f of x comma y dy dx is equal to, or not equal to, but is approximately equal to the summation from i equals 0 to n of x minus 1 h of y, and this is h of x, times the summation of j equals 0 to n y minus 1 f of x i y i. Okay, so that looks a tad confusing, but again, like most of these things, it's much easier to show how these work in practice. So let's get into an example. So let us try to do the double integral. Okay, so there are two methods. I'll be covering both of them. For the first method, uh, I like to call it the matrix method because um, it kind of uses a matrix, okay? And basically we want to evaluate, let's say, evaluate the integral from zero to two, zero to one of two x plus y dy dx. Okay, and we want to say we're going to use n of x is equal to n of y is equal to 2. Okay, and our definition of h has not changed. h of x is going to be, we're looking for our x, so it, it will be, according to this, it's going to be b minus a over n of x. And our h of y is equal to d minus c over n of y. Okay, so let's just do this quickly. So for this particular, particular example, we're going to have 2 over 2, which is equal to 1, and 1 over 2. So we can say our h, h of x is equal to 1, and h of y is equal to a half. Okay, then what you do is you start to draw a set of axes. Okay, and on the axis we have our starting points. So we have our x, y axis, and we have zero, which is of interest, and uh, two, and zero, and one. Okay, and then what we do is we break up these into sections. So basically, on the x axis, we're looking at h of x, and we're going in steps of one. So zero. 1 and 2. Those are the key points. And on the y-axis we have 0, a half, and then 1, which is what we need. Then what we can do is we can draw a block around this. So now what we see is we have four blocks. Okay, and then this term right here tells us that we need to evaluate the uh, function at x of i, x of y, uh, x i, y i, okay, and that is the midpoints of each of these. So we need to get the coordinates of all these midpoints. Okay, so what we have here is we've got 1 over 4, and we have half, 3 over 2, and 3 over 2. Is that right? No. This is 3 over 4. Okay, and these all work out like that. Okay, then we can start following our formula. Okay, so let's draw them letter these A, B, C, and D. Okay, if I want to evaluate A, A is going to be F of a half, comma, quarter. Okay, and that's equal to 2 times a half plus 1 over 4, which is equal to 5 over 4. Okay, similarly, if 
we do B, C, and D, what we end up with is 7 over 4, 13 over 4, and 15 over 4. Okay, now we can follow the formula, which says that our double integral, okay, is equal to h of x, which we said is 1, times h of y, which is a half, times the summation of a plus a plus b plus c plus d, and this gives us a final answer of 5, okay? And that is the double integral. So the double integral from 0 to 2, 0 to 1 of 2x plus y dy dx is equal to 5, and that is the final answer. Okay, just to clarify why I can have h of x, h of y, is because in this formula right here, I can move this because it is a just a constant. I can move it outside. Okay, so that is the first method. Okay, the problem with this method is if we have um, n of x or n of y greater than n of x or n of y, either of them greater than let's say three or four. The, the figuring out of each coordinate becomes extremely tedious because we end up with a 3x3 three three or a 4x4 four four matrix in which there's lots of blocks that we need to work with. So we need to try to find a better kind of method. Okay, so this, this method is particularly useful and it's intuitive, which helps, but it's useful, I would say, for n is less than or equal to 3. Anything above that we have to try to find a different method, which is what I will cover now. Okay, using the same formula, we can expand this and say, okay, so we can say that the double integral from A to B, C to D of f of x and y, dy, dx, is roughly equal to h of x, h of y, summation of i equals 0, n of x minus 1, summation j equals 0, n of y minus 1, of f of, okay, and the x coordinate is going to be a plus hx over 2 plus i hx, okay, and the y coordinate is going to be c plus h of y divided by 2 plus j h of y. Okay. Okay, h and y, h, y, and h, x are both the same as before. A is the value, A and C represent the lower limits of our integration. Okay, and basically, again, this looks quite scary, but it really isn't in practice. So let's go for an example. So let's do this example. So we will run the double integral from 2 to 3 from 0 to 2 of the same function, 2x plus y dy dx. So we want to evaluate this, okay? And it says that we must use n of x is equal to n of y is equal to 12, okay? So, sorry, not 12, but rather 5, okay? So if we were to use the previous method, then it would be quite difficult because we would have a 5x5 five five matrix which would require us to do 25 calculations, which is not great. So instead what we do is we can write this in sections. And how you do this is you work with the first um, coordinate system and we can say that the double integral or an integral we can, say, we can just work, and we can say that um, the double integral is equal to the summation. And we're working with y, so we're going to go from 0 to n of y minus 1, which is 4, and we have the h of y in front. Okay, let's get this. h of y equals h of x in this case, if I'm correct. No, it does not. 
Okay, so we can say that h of y is equal to 2 over 5, and h of x is equal to 1 over 5. Okay, so we have h of y, which is 2 over 5, of 2x plus y bar. Okay, and what is y bar? y bar is that thing right there, where y bar is equal to a, which is 0, plus h of, sorry, this is, y bar is that one right there, which is c, which is 0, plus um, h of y, which is 2 over 5 divided by 2, which is 2 over 10, plus j of 2 over 5. Okay, and if we do the summation, what we end up is, this is a constant, so we can treat it as a constant, so what we end up is 2 over 5 times 5 times 2x, so when you run a summation of a constant, you just get 5 of the exact same thing, so this cancels, I'm left with 4x, okay, plus the summation of 2 over 5, 0 to 4, of 2 over 10, plus j times 2 over 5. Okay, and then that you can put straight into your calculator. I wouldn't try doing it yourself. Well, you can, it's quite easy, but if you've got a calculator that can perform that, it's much easier to just put it into your calculator, and what you're left with is plus, um, give me one second, what you're left with is plus 2. Okay, now you do the exact same thing, but now for the x coordinate. So you say that it's equal to Instead of x, we can say x bar, where x bar is actually equal to that x bar is equal to that right there, which is a. a has a value of 2 plus h of x divided by 2, that's 1 over 10, plus h of x i, which is 1 over 5 i. Okay, and if we slot that in, we have the following. We have the summation from h of x, okay, from 0 to 4, once again, 4x becomes 4, 2 plus 1 over 10 plus 1 over 5i plus 2. And what we get is the final answer, which is the double integral is equal to 4. And that is the solution. Okay, so essentially what you do is you deal with one of the coordinates at a time. And then, um, yeah, you do the summation individually. And this is particularly useful when n is quite large. Um, yeah, and that's uh, the end of the video. And that actually covers the numerical integration section. So in the next video, we will be covering numerical solutions to nonlinear equations. Um, yes, so I hope you guys found this useful and enjoyed. Thanks.